could you give us a definition of what cultural leadership is? I think cultural leadership has two components to it. I think that there are those leaders in our community who are um, advancing um, the cultural arts in particular. Um, and uh, by that I mean uh, not just the visual arts, which I think a lot of people would think of right off the bat, but also um, the cultural arts like uh, history and uh, these things that are really um, uh, higher order or, or thought oriented things. So uh, people that are leading in uh, demonstrating that you can be a painter or you can be an artist, you can be involved in stage or theater or you can be involved in keeping history alive in our community. Uh, I think that's cultural leadership. I think the other aspect of cultural leadership is um, demonstrating a commitment uh, to cultural institutions and uh, the city of Grand Prairie has done that over the last number of years significantly. For me, uh, the definition of cultural leadership is the way of life, customs and script of a group of people. Cultural leadership is the art of leading the cultural sector. Definitions and perceptions of leadership vary from culture. Uh, well, I believe that cultural leadership must be a combination of being both a vision and pragmatism. Uh, I think visionary in the sense that efforts must be directed towards producing new ideas that will build and, and sustain culture, um, but also pragmatic uh, so that you ensure that your project uh, supports the goals that it's set up for and, of course, is financially viable as well. Um, I believe that cultural leaders need to inspire as well as uh, deal with uh, practical realities, um, mm -hmm. especially in regards to sustainability. Um, you have to tell your story and sell your story in, um, in a very dynamic uh, environment. And you have to be convincing as well. Cultural leadership to me is the ability to invoke a positive change in the community through a program or a idea. So based on that definition, what does cultural leadership mean to you? Well, for me and the work that I do at City Hall and with City Council, uh, most often cultural leadership uh, means supporting the facilities that uh, bring arts and culture to our community. Uh, that's like the Art Gallery of Grand Prairie, the Library, Center for Creative Arts, and the, uh, the theater. Um, and of course the uh, Philip J. Curry Dinosaur Museum. So support of all of those sort of physical institutions is a way that the City of Grand Prairie shows cultural leadership. Um, but we also support the organizations and the people who are involved in the arts. And I think that those are both ways that, uh, that, that we're involved in cultural leadership. Well, uh, I think that the definition has many dimensions. Uh, I think you can look at the culture as a family unit, a small nonprofit organization, a municipality or a province. In general, to me, it means how can leadership have a positive impact on the culture of an organization. It means setting strategic direction within the corporate culture to achieve established goals. Well, I, I think it, it, it's definitely a collaborative effort by definition. Um, and you know, you need to uh, blend experience uh, with creative and innovative ideas. Um, I, th I think it's all about tapping into uh, uh, both the passion and uh, the experience of your team um, in that collaborative uh, environment. So, you know, success can be measured how uh, we engage people, um, strengthening our community, and of course, potentially adding to the economy of, uh, of a local community or a larger community as well. I think that uh, the uh, uh, Philip Curry uh, Museum is a good example of cultural leadership. We know that uh, the community seized uh, an opportunity for the Grand Prairie region to build on uh, this uh, unique local resource that you have. Um, and then the result is that we're creating a cult cultural institution that uh, can teach Albertans and uh, visitors about the remarkable natural history of, uh, of our province and, uh, and broadcast that out to the larger larger world. Personal experience I've had with cultural leadership has revolved mainly around recreation and tourism. I've witnessed um, communities coming together in a great way to enhance the quality of life in their uh, community and for visitors coming 
the, whether it's a new trail or a camping facility or a world-class facility like the museum here, it's again that ability to get the community excited about something positive and changes the whole dynamic of the community. John, from your personal experience, can you give us some input of those experiences with cultural leadership? Yeah, you know, I think probably one of the, uh, um, the best examples that comes to mind for me of somebody who uh, exemplified cultural leadership was the former director of our art gallery, Robert Stevens. Um, Robert was very, very passionate about ensuring that uh, the residents and, and the young people of the Grand Prairie region, and in fact all of Northern Alberta, had access to uh, an arts program um, that would stimulate their minds and uh, show them opportunities and possibilities that they might not have imagined if we didn't have that kind of institution here. And so I think that, that uh, Robert uh, was a, a great example of somebody who uh, brought a passion for the arts uh, and uh, for culture to our community and he shared that with others. Uh, and he really shared uh, something that opened up possibilities for our community that wouldn't have been there otherwise. I, I can draw from my experience as a teacher. Um, I, I taught uh, at a uh, innovative school, uh, Victoria School of the, for the Performing Arts uh, here in Edmonton. And uh, it, I guess through education, we managed to help to educate uh, a whole generation of cultural leaders that uh, went forth and uh, are, are leaders right across the country and uh, in different parts of the world even. Um, so always uh, starting with your youth and uh, giving youth opportunities is very important. Um, and uh, now, of course, as the uh, Minister of Culture and Tourism, I have lots of opportunities to look carefully at institutions and uh, projects to fund that will not just uh, create uh, cultural experiences for Albertans, but also, as I say, uh, help to educate and to nurture the next generation of, of leaders in our community. Uh, in 2010, I had the privilege of being appointed to the River of Death and Discovery Museum Society until 2015. This society shaped the cultural community of paleontology and, as a board, began to form a corporate culture with the end goal of facilitating and building a world-class museum in the peace country. The board provided the strategy, the culture, and the leadership in achieving this goal. I was honored to be part of this project. In terms of the past, present, and future, what has cultural leadership been like in Wembley and surrounding area? How has it changed? Well, you know, the interesting thing is that I think that over our entire existence up here in the peace country region, there have always been cultural leaders. Um, Grand Prairie residents, uh, ever since this area were, was founded, um, have always had high expectations. Even though they may have moved far away from their families, they may have come here with very little, uh, whatever they carry on their backs or on the ox cart when they came up, there were always those people who were interested in arts and culture and they wanted to bring their experience uh, with them and they expected to be able to have access to the same sort of things that they might have had in their home communities. I think that continues today. I think that's exactly the same. Uh, we continue to get people from all around the world moving to the Grand Prairie region and those people bring with them an expectation that they should have access to the same kind of cultural experiences that they did back home. Um, so in some ways I think a lot of things have stayed the same. The people that come to the Grand Prairie region are still passionate about culture. Um, I think the thing that has changed is that uh, we have a lot more infrastructure to support that. We have uh, fantastic facilities. Uh, some of the ones that I mentioned, like the Art Gallery, the Library, Center for Creative Arts, uh, the Dinosaur Museum that will be opening this fall, um, and on the drawing board is a new Center for Performing Arts in the city. So we have that kind of uh, infrastructure that people generations ago could have only imagined. They never would have dreamt that we'd have things like that here, uh, even though they had the passion for culture. Well, I think that uh, um, the culture, uh, not just in Grand Prairie, but right across the province, is... Uh, grows and uh, enriched by uh, the people, the gen generation of people that uh, uh, live here and, and call Alberta, Alberta home, um, from uh, Indigenous First Nations people to uh, newcomers that make their home here from around across Canada and around the world. Each generation adds to the cultural fabric um, of, our re of our communities and uh, our province. And so as Alberta's grown, um, I think our awareness of uh, uh, culture has uh, evolved as well. 
Um, I think there's a greater demand than ever for cultural experience and, uh, and to make sure that um, we are, are, are uh, building those uh, potentials and building those uh, opportunities to uh, uh, meet that need and to, uh, I think, help to diversify our economy too. Um, it definitely helps in uh, certain places like uh, the museum that you're building up there will, will definitely help your economy, I can tell you that. Um, I think that um, the most successful cultural leaders have shown their ability to uh, be adaptive and flexible, uh, looking for new ideas, and draw from uh, the, the, the human uh, resources that we have available around us, and uh, the different cultures that they represent, and, uh, and then away we go. Um, although the term cultural leadership has been around for many years, I'm not sure that it's been, it has been defined using those terms in Wembley. Organizations are at various stages of development, in identifying what their goals and objectives are for their own organizations and are now identifying the corporate culture that they want to demonstrate. I believe we will in the future be more influenced by cultural leadership. Based on that response, what do you look forward to for the future of cultural leadership for Wembley and surrounding area? Is having the Philip J. Curry Dinosaur Museum located in Wembley, Alberta a part of that? I think the next things, uh, obviously, in the city of Grand Prairie on the drawing board is uh, the Performing Arts Centre. Uh, that'll be a long-term project that'll probably happen over the next decade. I think that that'll bring our performing arts um, and music scene to the next level. Um, but once that's in place, um, and in the areas where we have other fantastic facilities in place, I think it's really about engaging the public and engaging people so that they can come and experience the range of cultural cultural opportunities that we have in Grand Prairie. Um, so uh, for us in, in many areas, the infrastructure, the buildings are in place. Now it's about engaging and inspiring the population to come and take part. And, um, and what we're going to need to do that is going to be uh, passionate people who work in cultural industries uh, who are willing to get out there and, and invite people in and show them that we do have access to opportunities that you would expect in cities and centers that are much, much larger than Grand Prairie. While the Philip J. Curry Museum will definitely be part of the cultural leadership of Wembley and the surrounding peace region, and will have a positive impact on all sectors of our society. It has been said that leaders shape culture and that culture shapes leaders. Can you discuss this relationship? Yeah, I think, um, I think one of the primary requirements of leadership is uh, to have an open mind and to be open to a broad range of possibilities. Um, and I think uh, exposure to culture at an early age uh, opens your mind uh, to uh, more than what you experience in your day-to-day -day life. Um, experience and familiarity with, with culture and being involved in cultural activities um, opens up people's uh, thought process to new possibilities that they hadn't thought of before. And I think that's one of the most important traits of a leader. You need to be able to uh, not just see things as they are today, but imagine them as they need to be into the future. And uh, I think uh, experience and competency with culture uh, is something that really aids that. You know, in my mind, uh, the best <coughs> leaders uh, of any shape and form recognize where they come from and uh, the, the, uh, the history from which they, they come. And uh, then, of course, um, working with the uh, so to speak, the uh, metaphorical play that they have been uh, given to work with. And so uh, a great example, again, uh, community leaders in the Grand Prairie region saw the abundant natural resources in the area, um, uh, paleontological, ecological resources, and uh, seized the opportunity to build uh, the, the museum um, that you um, are um, just enjoying to the opening of here now, and uh, share those resources with uh, all Albertans and uh, for people around the world. So um, again, we leaders are shaped by the culture in which they come from, but uh, you can always push the push the edges a little bit, and uh, I think that's what uh, our, our our task is here, uh, both now and in, in, in the immediate future. Well, I believe the purpose of leadership is to create a culture. So does leadership create a culture, or does culture create a leadership? I think you can answer yes to both. You need both to strike the right balance to realize your organization.